I write about politics quite a bit. Um, sometimes in my column I'll write about politics and I will get letters back from readers saying I read you for sex, I don't want to read you for politics, please leave politics alone. And usually it's right-wing conservatives who read me who send me that letter because when I write about politics I write from a left-wing perspective. And I always say to them, you know, as a sex writer I, I will leave politics alone just as soon as politicians leave sex alone. Especially in the United States, we have politicians who want to regulate the sex lives of individual Americans. Um, when it comes to access to birth control, when it comes to access to abortion, when it comes to uh, gay people being out, when it comes to women and female pleasure, we have politicians who are all over that and we're talking about it constantly. And so if they're going to talk about sex, I'm going to talk about politics. If you want me to shut up about politics, get politicians to shut up about sex. I've been writing the column for 25 years and in that time uh, LGBT civil rights in the United States have made huge gains. Things that I never thought I would see in my lifetime that we now have marriage equality in the United States. I never thought that I would see that. Uh, I like to think that in a very small way columns like mine, uh, queer writers like me helped push that through, helped make that happen. Um, because we were out there uh, demanding, insisting, uh, and also just telling our truths and sharing our stories. And that's really what changes people's minds on LGBT equality. Nothing makes somebody move from being homophobic to being a supporter of queer equality like knowing someone who's gay. And for a lot of my readers, I'm the gay person that they know. They might not know any other gay people in their life. They know me and they like me. And that really is what makes the difference uh, in gay rights, is us being out of the closet and open with people and honest with people, and that changes minds. Uh, and I have a lot of very young readers, a lot of readers in high school and university, and I'm the only gay person that they know, or the first gay person that they get to know. And I think, uh, based on my mail, I'm a pretty good person to know for these people, a pretty good first gay person to know. Um, because I've changed a lot of minds and brought a lot of people around on the subject of uh, LGBT civil equality. It's, it's one of the things I love most about writing the column. It's sort of secret activism. Gay people, I like to say, are better at sex than straight people. And it's not because we're magic, uh, although we're that too, but it has nothing to do with this. It's that Gay people communicate about sex in a way that straight people don't have to. Some straight people do, but straight people don't have to. And if there's anything that straight people could take from gay people and incorporate it in their own sex lives to their betterment, it would be this. Um, the, I call it the four magic words. It's what two men say to each other when they get to yes, which is what are you into? They ask each other, what are you into? Because what's gonna happen after you get to consent can't be assumed. When a man and a woman are going to have sex for the first time, they get to consent and then they stop talking to each other because everything that's going to happen then is assumed. It's going to be vaginal intercourse, heterosexual vaginal intercourse. She's going to be penetrated. There's nothing to talk about after you get to consent. When a man and a man get to consent, when they get to yes, what happens next? They have to keep talking because who's going to fuck who, or if there's even gonna be fucking, that can't be assumed, you have to negotiate around that. So two men go to bed, they get to yes, and they keep having a conversation that starts with what are you into? What can we do? What do you wanna do? What turns you on? What's gonna happen now? And a man and a woman get to bed and they get to yes, and they stop talking. And it's very empowering, that question, what are you into? Because at that moment, you can rule anything in and rule anything out. Um, and that, that conversation is what makes gay people better at sex. And it's a conversation that, you know, we are forced to have. So it doesn't mean we're better people, it doesn't mean we're more sexually enlightened. It just means because of the plumbing, we have to talk. We have to negotiate what is going to happen. Straight people don't have to have that conversation, and so they don't, and they don't get good at that conversation, they don't get good at sharing. Um, what they're into, what they want. They're not encouraged or empowered by that question to express their wants. And that means that a lot of straight people just sort of fumble along for a while. And in that relationship, 
aren't saying anything, aren't, aren't discussing their needs or wants. Um, and if that is really, you know, when I think about gay sex and straight sex, gay people and straight people, that's what straight people should take from us. Not brunch, not sit-ups, not like fabulous apartments. What they should take from us is that conversation, is that kind of communication, because communication makes sex better. We're forced to have it. Straight people aren't. Um, we can't avoid it. Straight people do avoid it. <laughs>